Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr. This is episode 179, and it's a short story called The View from the Water Tower Room. And here we go. Hank was up in the Water Tower Room. He liked being up there because his father's knees hurt and he didn't like coming up. There were little slat windows and he could look out over the farm. The house was attached to the water tower and he could see the roof, low and dark, but sparkling from the rocks on it, catching the sun. The driveway was a loop and went quite close to the front door. The far side of the loop, nearest the road, had the chicken coop, and to his left was the barn. No animals, but lots of tools and equipment. There were various other small buildings with various uses, most of which he could see. A squirrel jumped off of the small apple tree and onto the roof. Hank watched it as it looked into the gutter. Then a hawk landed hard on the squirrel, making a loud bang on the roof. What the fuck was that? He heard his father yell from the house. Hank did not answer. The hawk rose with the squirrel, which was large and squirming madly to get out of the hawk's talons. It had taken it up past the chicken coop when it let go. The squirrel landed out of sight. Hank lay back on the floor next to the water tower. He could hear the chickens, which didn't, hadn't seemed to have noticed the hawk or the squirrel, and he could hear the occasional car go by on the road. He must have fallen asleep, because when his father started yelling, Hank! His back was a little stiff. He got up and went down the stairs. His father, Hank Sr., was in his overalls, beer in hand, squinting at him. The hell were you doing up there? Nothing. Nothing, his father imitated. Go feed the damn chickens. When he went by, his father smacked him on the back of his head with his empty hand. The pain and heat spread over his head and down his neck. Hank ran, pushing the door. It slammed open. He knew his father would be angry about that, but not so angry as to chase him. His pace slowed until he was shuffling along. Since his father wasn't yelling, he wasn't bothering to watch him. Hank went around the chicken coop. He hadn't seen the hawk dive down to pick up the squirrel. He wondered if the squirrel was okay or not. The answer came soon. It had landed hard on the exposed root of a tree and was draped over it. It was squirming slightly. Hank looked up. There were two good-sized branches above, but the squirrel had managed to miss both of them. If it had hit either, it likely wouldn't have been badly hurt, unless the talons had already pierced something vital. He looked a moment longer, then turned and walked across the yard to the barn. He found a shovel and walked back to the tree next to the chicken coop. It was still there, squirming. Hank lifted his shovel and brought it down hard on the squirrel's head. He did it once more to be sure. The squirrel stopped squirming. Then it stopped moving. He put his right foot next to the squirrel and the shovel on the other side. Then he flipped its body with the side of his brogan onto the blade of the shovel. He paused a moment, considering. Then he walked toward the road. He flung the squirrel into the ditch next to the road, then turned around and walked back to the barn and put the shovel back. Then he turned back towards the house. His father hadn't come out to check if he was feeding the chickens. He's probably on the sofa drinking, Hank thought. He went to the chicken coop. He watched them for a minute through the wire, scratching on the little open area. The trees mostly had branches over the top, so there was no ceiling. The branches were enough to keep out the hawks, and that plus the rooster. Hank thought about his friend, Bill Payman. His father decided to kill their rooster because it kept waking him up. They worked. But then he found out the hard way that there was a fox in the area. They were rare, but not unheard of, and the rooster was what was keeping the fox away. In fact, the rooster was probably making so much noise because it was keeping the fox away. Anyway, within a few weeks, all the chickens were gone. He thought about their chickens. He didn't really like them. Their rooster was also loud, and the chickens smelled, and he had to water and feed them. And worst of all, he had to muck out the coop every couple months. That was an awful job. But he didn't want the chickens dead, either. He wondered if the hawk would find the squirrel and eat it. Somehow he doubted it. But maybe something else would. He opened the storage bin. He took a scoop of scratch and threw it through the wire so the chickens could eat it. He also got most of the chickens that were in the coop to come out. Then he took the small bucket of feed and opened the door. Put the feed in the feeder, waggling one foot a little to keep a curious chicken from escaping. Then he took the bucket off the outside of the bin and brought it to the well. 
There was an electric pump to bring water to the house, but there was no tap from that at the well. Too much pressure, his father said. But there was a separate hand-powered pitcher pump. He hooked the bucket under the faucet and started pumping. He could soon hear the water coming up the pipe. Then it poured out into the bucket. It was full within a few pumps. He kept the pump going slowly and drank the cold, clear water. He felt it rolling down his chin and onto his shirt front, but he didn't care. It felt wonderful. He brought the bucket back to the coop and cleaned and filled the water container. Then he went back to the house. The father was on the sofa, watching a war movie on the TV. Several empty beer cans were on the end table, and he had another one in his hand. When he tried to walk by, his father grabbed his forearm. He did as hard as he always did. Hank knew he would have bruises there that night. Did you do the damn chickens? He spat. Yeah, I just finished, Hank said. He tried to look at the TV. You better have, he said, and let his go arm go with a jerk. Hank went to his room and played as quietly as he could. He knew that if he disturbed the war movie, it would be trouble. But it wasn't quiet enough, or maybe the beer had run out. After about an hour going in... after. About an hour after going into his room, his father stormed in. Get up! Get up! He yelled at Hank and snatched him up anyway. What? What? Hank yelled, but it was no good. The hitting started, and Hank eventually pulled himself free and ran out of the house. His father didn't chase him out. He ran out to the well. It had been a long time, years since the hitting had made him cry, but he was crying now. The well had a hinged cover. He lifted up and looked down into its cool depths. The water wasn't even visible, it was so far down. He wondered what it would be like to jump in and just sink under the water. He wondered what it would be like to be picked up by a hawk, brought up hundreds of feet into the air. Looking down on the farm, a road, a straight dark line, the house, a couple of rectangles, then just a dark blur, then being dropped, falling to earth, to be crushed by the ground or broken by a tree root or being dropped down the well to be forgotten, or being dropped halfway, hitting the well, severing himself in half on the sharp corrugated metal. These thoughts, while not exactly calming, eventually let him stop crying. He pumped some water, not bothering to close the cover, just looking down the well while he pumped. Not having a pail, it just poured out onto the ground. He drank and drank. He heard screaming coming from the direction of the house. It was his father, yelling something incoherent about wasting water. His father rushed at him. Hank ducked down at the last second, curled into a ball. His father, reaction slowed by alcohol, stumbled into him, then tumbled into the well, yelling. Hank ran back to the house. This had happened before. He'd had many daydreams about his father meeting some horrible accident. He would wake up, bruised, and have another day of wondering how many drinks would be too many. He went past the TV and the empty sofa and into his room. It was still way too early for bed, but he decided to crawl into bed anyway. He fell asleep, which is what he hoped for, because as his bruises came in, the sleep would help keep him from feeling the aches right away. He slept through the night. He woke up hungry. Went to the kitchen and made himself some cereal, putting some sugar on it after making sure his father wasn't around to berate him for it. After breakfast, he wondered where his father was. He went all around the house, but he wasn't inside. He looked out the window towards the well. The cover was still open. He grabbed a flashlight and ran to the well. He looked down. The light was feeble. The sunlight was just as ineffective in showing what was down there. But he thought he could just make out a figure in the water. Father! Hank yelled. But there was no answering reply, nor any movement. Hank ran for the phone and dialed the emergency number. An hour later, the police and the emergency crews were pulling the body of his father out of the well. Hank just sat and stared. He didn't know what was going to happen. He didn't know what it meant for his future. He wondered, in a vague way, if his aunt, his mother's sister, would take him in. He wondered if this would be the last time he would see the farm. He wondered if he were just a squirrel, broken on a tree root. And that's the story for this week. If you have any comments or questions about it, please contact us, cryptobiography at gmail.com, or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. And thanks for listening. Words and Music, copyright 2020, Cryptobiography, LLC, all rights reserved. Characters and events are fictional. 
fictionalized or satirical.